Hey, hi everyone. My name is Erica Pate and I'm a fruit crop specialist with the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. And today I'm going to talk about strawberry substrate production systems. I just want to start by saying thanks to Brian Zimmerman from Meteor Systems, uh, who provided a lot of pictures and content for today's presentation. So there's an increasing interest in substrate or soilless berry production uh, for a few reasons. And once you bring your strawberries out of the soil, you don't have to rotate. Um, there's less soil disease issues. Uh, you have more control over the system, so more consistent production. Uh, increased yields because you're planting at a higher density, and then improved labor efficiency if you bring your plants up um, to a, a more comfortable picking level for um, your pickers. And then many growers will also uh, grow in a protected system, like a high tunnel, and tunnels or other shelters protect your crop from uh, wind or rain. Um, so this leads to less disease pressure, fewer pesticides are necessary, and then uh, when you harvest, um, you can harvest when it's raining because um, in some of these systems, it's completely covered. And then of course, um, some season extension as well. So after deciding to grow strawberries in a soilless system, there are um, different options that we're gonna go through. And the choice will vary for each operation and will depend on the grower, your preference over the level of control, uh, the size of the operation um, and your market among others. And the different systems include producing um, on the ground level in an open field or covered uh, under on tabletops, uh, on mini, under mini tunnels uh, or mini air systems, high tunnels, and then with the most control you have uh, glass houses. So the first system uh, for these berries grown in substrates is growing them on the ground. This is the easiest system uh, with the lowest investment required for materials. So these ground gutters are shapes with the soil and covered with polythene or fabric. Um, and so this cover helps with weed control and keeps the roots from growing out of the substrate and into the soil. Um, and then the gutters can either be filled directly with your substrate, just poured straight into like that, that shaped gutter, or you can put pots um, or containers or bags into that gutter. Uh, and then this can either be in an open field or in a covered system. So aside from being the cheapest system, you will also get um, a bit of an advantage uh, with an earlier production from warmth from the soil. But one of the disadvantages of the system compared to the others is that um, they're not raised up. So you're not getting that increased labor efficiency from other raised soilless production systems. So then when we're talking about raised systems, uh, you have the tabletop, uh, systems like you can see in these pictures and the main one of the main advantages of raising them up is that labor efficiency and reduced labor costs so your your workers can pick comfortably uh, for a long time because they're uh, picking at a more comfortable height and then your fruit is also hanging and it isn't in contact with the soil uh, so you have improved fruit quality and easier harvest because all those berries are hanging down and, and they're not um, mixed in with the leaves uh, compared to uh, the the system on the ground, these are not as early. Uh, once you move to a tabletop system, you'll also have to adapt your equipment um, because you're in a, you know, because you're raised up. And then you might need different machinery to drive up and down the rows, you know, for spraying or, or controlling the grass. Uh, and then in the open tabletop system, you have fewer infrastructure costs compared to um, the next systems I'm gonna talk about. Uh, but you also have less control over the environment. So you will have increased disease pressure compared to some of these other protect, uh, protected systems. So if you want to protect your systems, uh, one option is uh, these mini tunnels. Uh, you also have high tunnels, a mini air system or glass house systems. In Europe, something like 95% of substrate grown strawberries are in some kind of protected system so that have more control over uh, the environment. With mini tunnels, only one row is covered at a time. So your berries are protected, but your pickers aren't when they're moving uh, down the row. So this protection keeps your berries dry and will help reduce fruit rots like Botrytis and Anthracnose, which is becoming a bigger challenge in Ontario. Uh, and this covered system is also a little bit more labor intensive compared to the others because each row is uh, covered individually. 
then an adaptation of these mini tunnels are uh, coupled tunnels or mini tunnels with a rain gutter in between. Uh, so soilless berry systems require a lot of irrigation. So collecting rainwater can be a big benefit to help meet this water demand. And then in this second picture, you can see that uh, the mini tunnels have coupled covers. So it's completely protected underneath. So your pickers and your harvested berries are gonna be protected. Just another picture of these mini tunnels. Uh, and you can see that each row is supported. Uh, so each gutter system is supported. So um, posts underneath um, and just we'll compare that to the suspended systems in the next couple of slides. So these next systems are the mini or mini air systems, the mini air and the mini air light. So unlike the mini tunnels in the last slide that are supported on tabletops, these systems are suspended from the structure. So there aren't posts under every row. Uh, the mini air is also covered with controlled ventilation and it has rainwater collection gutters as well, which helps with that water demand. Uh, so these systems have you know, those improved labor conditions with the raised system, good fruit quality, same as the tabletops, but it's easier to move and drive around in with fewer posts. So you can, uh, you can mow a few rows at a time, cover more ground with sprayer depending on your equipment and more space um, for your harvesting equipment underneath. Um, so it's just a, a little bit um, of a, you know, less cramped compared to some, some of those supported systems. Uh, so here's another picture of the mini air. You can see how this can be vented I think on the top, you know, on the left side of that picture, you can see how the entire tunnel down the length of it can open. And this can be manual or automatic. And this is one of the features of the mini air system. And you also have choices on the design of your system. So you can see you have, you can have two rows uh, per tunnel or, um, or three rows between, uh, or three rows of gutters between posts. And then uh, another example of the ventilation options in the mini air. And here's some pictures from below, gives you a better idea of that space underneath. So you can see that this, um, that, that one of these rows is not, or that this row is suspended. So you can see that there's more space underneath and more space to maneuver around in that tunnel. And then I'm talking a lot about strawberries, but I just wanted to add that, uh, you know, this is also an option for raspberry growers. And so here's a picture of raspberries in a mini tunnel system. And then just a wider view of the mini air system from outside. And it just shows, um, you know, the whole structure. Hanging the berries in the gutters is a huge weight. So uh, you have to have a really strong structure to support that system. I also mentioned the mini air light, which is similar to the mini air, but um, in that it's it's suspended gutters and you do have ventilation options, but it, um, it, it's less controlled ventilation and there's no rainwater collection. Okay, so now high tunnels. So these are larger structures than the mini air or the mini tunnels. Uh, your high tunnels can either be tabletop or suspended. Um, and then, Ventilation can be a challenge in these tunnels during you know, those hot conditions in the summer. So the tunnels need to be able to be uh, vented during the day or closed during some colder conditions. And this can be automated um, depending on your system. And here's another look at a high tunnel system. And this is a tabletop with each row supported. And then if your structure allows it, then you can also have your suspended uh, system in the high tunnel. So finally, uh, glass house production. So growers who want more control uh, will produce in a glass house. So you can see that uh, these are typically suspended from the roof and you can also include heating um, and lights for off season production. Uh, another picture of a greenhouse system sh just again shows how in these uh, in these tabletop or suspended systems that the berries are hanging. Uh, so improve fruit quality and again, like easier harvest because all those berries are um, hanging there. Um, like you can see in this picture. So with the different systems that I've spoken about today, uh, kind of 
you might have seen some different setups of containers of how they're holding the substrate. Uh, you can put the substrate directly into the gutter. You can use pots or troughs on, or grow bags. So the first option is to pour the substrate straight into your gutter. So straight into the metal gutters in, in your tabletop or your suspended systems or straight into those um, gutters formed on the ground level. Uh, this is less expensive than, so direct into gutters is less expensive than the other options and it gives you more flexibility with uh, planting density, but you're also limited with the system because you can't um, plant elsewhere. You can't fill your containers elsewhere and then move them. So you have to do it all um, directly into the gutter. Uh, and some growers uh, want the option to move their plants or like start their plants outside maybe or move them onto the ground and to overwinter them. Uh, so you can't do that with this, uh, with putting the substrate directly into the gutter. So it depends on uh, what your preference is. And then also with the direct into the gutter, you may run into drainage issues if the field isn't uh, completely level. And then um, pots or troughs is another option. With pots or troughs, and then also with um, putting substrate directly into the gutters, the substrate is exposed. Uh, so berries can come into contact with the substrate if they're lying on that substrate. And this will lead to fruit rot. Um, this can lead to um, fruit rot and then also more weed challenges because your substrate is exposed. Um, and then more about the pots or the troughs. Uh, the containers will last for years and then you just fill them with loose substrate, which is um, less expensive than uh, grow bags. And these types of containers can help to manage the drainage uh, because you can see that they have little legs underneath, um, raising them up from the gutters. Um, and then between the two, between the pots and the troughs, uh, the bigger the container is, the more flexibility you have with planting density. Um, so, so, but again, it depends on uh, your system and your setup. And then the third option is your grow bags. So grow bags are ready filled and the planting holes can be perforated on demand and you know, the length can, can vary depending on your setup. Uh, there's no open substrate. So you have fewer challenges with weeds or with fruit lying on the substrate. However, in this system, it's a little bit, it's more expensive than the other systems. And then you have uh, more waste to deal with with that plastic and, and getting rid of it at the end of the season. So here's uh, a picture just to show you the different systems. You can see this grower is using pots. And then um, this is that picture from the greenhouse where they are using troughs. Okay, and then here's a, a summary of the systems available from Meteor, but it, you know, it includes different attributes of each system. So, you know, does it have ventilation? Is that um, automated or manual? Uh, does it have rainwater collection? Is it suspended? Is it on tabletops? Uh, so if you want to take a closer look at this, just kind of provides a, a quick overview of the different systems that we covered today. And then also through this presentation, um, you've seen pictures from a few different suppliers. Uh, this is just a partial list of different suppliers. Um, there's many more, but if you have any questions about uh, systems, substrates, or containers, you can follow up with some of um, some of these suppliers. And then where to get plants? Uh, there are a few suppliers in Ontario, including Easy Grow Farms, Ready Set Grow, Verlinden Farm, and then in Quebec we have uh, Nova Fruit and La Roe. Um, if there's anybody I'm missing, please let me know. Uh, and some of these propagators are um, already selling out for 2021 and taking orders for 2022. So if you're interested in this type of system, um, then you know I would start planning now and get in contact with them. Okay, so this uh, you know is a lot of information quickly. So if you're looking for more information, Eric Boot is with BBB, which is a substrate supplier. And he's hosting a couple more webinars. Uh, there's one on the 18th in a couple of days, and then again on the 25th. Uh, he had the first one on the 11th, which was excellent. So highly recommend checking those out, and they're free. And then there's another, uh, you know, tabletop system webinar coming up in October with uh, from the University of Minnesota and the University of Wisconsin. 
And while I have you, I have a couple more announcements. Uh, so the Ontario Fruit and Vegetable Convention, instead of in-person this year, you might have seen that they're doing an educational series. So they have videos or webinars available. Uh, and one of the videos that's currently posted is the is from Jason DeVoe and is on the crop adapted spraying in blueberries. So um, Jason has spoken about that to our group before. So if you want to kind of see the conclusion of that project, you can check out that video. Um, there's videos on resistance management, including uh, herbicide, insecticide, and fungicide resistance. So if you're interested in these videos, uh, go to the OFPC website and check out their e-newsletter videos. And there's a funding program deadline coming up in Raspberry 1.0 workshop. So this uh, funding program is for the Enhanced Agri-Food Worker Protection Program. Uh, and this funding is available to help improve the health and safety of agri-food workers. Uh, and I just wanted to bring this up because the deadline's approaching on the 26th. So um, just uh, if you're looking to apply, uh, do that sooner than later. And the funding can cover PPE, medical testing equipment, uh, cleaning and disinfection supplies, worker wages and isolation expenses for workplace positive COVID-19 cases, um, or infrastructure projects up to $100,000, um, such as housing. Uh, so if you're looking for more information on that, uh, there's information on our blog on fruit.ca. And then there's also a recording of an information session as part of, it's on the blog for the OFBC um, educational series as well. And then uh, my last one for you is uh, Raspberry 1.0. This is our um, annual workshop that we're putting on. It's on raspberries this year. So this is information for um, new growers or growers uh, or experienced growers looking for a refresh on some of these topics, including site selection, physiology, fertility and nutrient management, pest management, production systems, pruning, training, varieties, and, and marketing. Um, and pretty excited about the speakers we got this year. One of the advantages of um, our virtual reality is that we could get speakers from different sides of the country, including Bernadine Strick from Oregon State and David Hanley from the University of Maine. So uh, contact Kevin if you want to register. And hopefully I'll see some of you there. And with that, I'll leave it there. So thanks everybody. And thanks again to Brian Zimmerman for providing pictures and information for this presentation. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll do my best to help. Thanks.